Awesome. So since we have two radicals and it needs to be equidistant, we have to check out the distance of segment P prime O. P prime is the coordinates negative 6, 2, and O is the origin 0, 0. So again, when we figure out the distance between those, we find that the distances are equal, meaning they're equidistant. Draw concentric circles for the rotation. What do the concentric circles prove? Remember, we're drawing our circles. We want to use this metal point in our center, and we want to line up one of these open circles on the vertice that we want to draw. So I already did Q, and I was very happy that Q ended up and Q prime on the same circle. Be careful, you may need to take your paper out of your binder in order to draw your concentric circles. But notice this can't be a concentric circle because it needs another circle to be concentric worth. So I'm going to see if P and P prime can land on the same circle using the same center of rotation at the origin. So I'm going to investigate which little hole P lines up with. This seems pretty good. I'm going to draw my circle. Got stuck a little bit. Now let's see how I did. <gasps> That's wonderful. My red and green circles are both concentric circles because they share the same center, which is the center of rotation, and corresponding vertices lie on the same circle. Remember, because of the definition of a circle, the set of all points that are equidistant from a center point, and if two points lie on the same circle, it means those two points are equidistant from our center of rotation. So what do the concentric circles prove? Our concentric circles prove that corresponding vertices are the same distance away from your center of rotation. So that means that in a rotation, corresponding vertices are equidistant from the center of rotation because they're concentric circles and share the same center. Corresponding vertices are equidistant from the center of rotation. Wonderful. Let's turn the page. Number 10. Use the coordinates below to draw pre-image EFGH on the coordinate plane. Rotate the figure 90 degrees clockwise. Oh, that's important. 90 degrees clockwise about the origin and label it E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime. Write the coordinates for the rotation. So let's start by using the coordinates and drawing our pre-image. So let's start with our pre-image. E is negative 7, positive 3. F is negative 3, 1, 2, 3, positive 3, 1, 2, 3. G, negative 2, positive 1, and H, negative 6, positive 1. And you can connect your vertices to create this cool quadrilateral. You can also use your compass if you'd wish. And now we're going to use, you can either use your patty paper and let's trace, I already have the origin. So I'm gonna make my vertices easy to see and I'm gonna label them. I'm gonna use my pencil. I want it to go 90 degrees clockwise. So when I do that, I end up here. So let's record what these vertices end up being. E prime, do you see what it is on your picture? That's right, it's 3, 7. F prime, 3, 3, good. G prime, 
1, 2, and h prime, 1, 6. So then you can go back and you can graph those. 1, 2, 1, 6, 3, 3, 3, 7. Don't forget to label them h prime, f prime, e prime, g prime. Okay, and now I want you to look. Do you see a pattern? I see a pattern. And let's think about a rule. x, y will be mapped to negative 7, 3 went to 3, 7. Negative 3, 3 went to 3, 3. Negative 2, 1 went to 1, 2. Do you see how my y coordinate is now my corresponding x coordinate? That's awesome. And then my new y coordinate, how is it related to my previous x value? It's just the opposite. So it continues, will this rule work for a 270 degree counterclockwise rotation? Will it? Yes. Remember that 90 degrees clockwise has the same resulting image and orientation as a 270 degrees counterclockwise. Okay, so let's go through these and let's do some more rotations, starting always with our pre-image and continue doing some different types of rotations. The next one I want you to do is 180 degrees clockwise and label it E double prime, F double prime, G double prime, and H double prime. Quickly pause the video for one minute for students to finish their rotation. Okay, let's see how we did. Did you end up with E double prime at 7, negative 3, and F double prime at 3, negative 3, and G double prime at 2, negative 1, and H double prime at 6, negative 1? Wonderful. And what did you notice was that rule? What did you notice is the coordinate rule that will hold true for all 180 degrees clockwise rotations? x, y goes to negative x, negative y. So if I rotate a figure 180 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise, will the coordinates for the rotation be the same as 180 degrees clockwise? Hmm, go 180 degrees one direction. Is it the same result as 180 degrees the other direction? Why, yes it is. 180 degrees, the direction does not affect the outcome, your image. So let's look again. Let's look at, we have one more type of transformation rotation we have to look at. And let's look at 270 degrees clockwise. We're going to starting at our pre-image, and we want to go to E triple prime, F triple prime, G triple prime, H triple prime. Write your coordinates for the rotation. I'm going to give you one minute to finish your rotation and look at your coordinate rule. Please pause the video for just one minute. Wonderful. Let's take a look-see. E triple prime, F triple prime, G triple prime, and H triple prime. I'll read them. Negative 3, negative 7, negative 3, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 6. Our rule is x, y gets mapped to negative y, x. And yes, the 270 degrees clockwise is equal to a 90 degrees counterclockwise. We'll have the equal outcome. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a little cheat sheet for ourselves. We're going to make a little cheat sheet with ourselves in number 11. So that we can remember some of these rules and have an easy place to come back to. 
So when we are looking at a 90 degree rotation clockwise, remember this is always going to be clockwise for our first column here. If we're looking at a 90 degree rotation clockwise, we're always going to start with x comma y. And x comma y is going to be mapped to what? x comma y, do you remember, look up above? Yes, x comma y is mapped to y comma negative x. Excellent. And if you have a 180 degree rotation, 180 degree rotation clockwise, we're mapped to negative x comma negative y. 270 degree rotation clockwise, you get mapped to negative y comma x. And 360 rotation, that's right, it's just x, y, back to where we started from. So you can use this as your cheat sheet. And now let's talk about if we're going counterclockwise. Counterclockwise 90 degrees is the same thing as going clockwise 270 degrees. So I know that my original x comma y my original x comma y is going to end up being mapped to negative y comma x. 180 degrees, the direction does not make a difference. So we know that this will be mapped to negative x comma negative y. They're just both flipped. 270 degrees counterclockwise is the same thing as a 90 degree rotation clockwise. So this is going to be mapped to y comma negative x. And 360 degrees, the, again, the direction does not matter, y comma x. Take a moment and fill in those coordinates for me. I'll give you about one more minute. Looking around, looks like most people are done. Okay, so we have negative 9, 4, 4, 9. 9, negative 4, and negative 4, negative 9. And then on the other side, when we go counterclockwise, we could just match the ones that are the same. Or we can use our map 9, negative 4, 4, 9, negative 9, 4, and negative 4, negative 9. Excellente. Okay, let's start to have a little bit more fun with these rotations. Let's turn the page. I would like you to rotate the given image as indicated with the center of rotation at the origin and state the coordinate rule. So I need you to fill in the coordinate rule for all of these. And then don't forget to notice what direction you're going. I'm going to give you five minutes, five minutes to finish this page. Be sure to use our previous chart as your cheat sheet for the rules. Please pause the video for five minutes. 